Hello again, YouTube. My name is Bree, and in today's video, I'm going to be revisiting a topic that was probably my most popular video to date, and that is my experience with a no buy. Since that prior video did so well, I'm assuming that you might want an update on my progress as I continue doing my no buy, or to some extent, a low buy into the following year. So, let me give a little bit of background on what's going on in this painting, and then I'll do a brief recap of my prior video in case it's been a year since you saw it or you don't want to watch it, which is cool. And then I'll go ahead and talk about my current feelings on no buy and a little bit about what I plan to do next year. So I have no idea what I just said, <laughs> what order, so we're just going to wing it from here. It's getting late. I'm a little tired. So this painting is just another exploration in my sketchbook. I'm kind of currently in the process of evaluating where I currently am in my own art and considering where I want to be. So I'm kind of exploring and playing around right now um, over these last, basically last month and a half of the year to kind of create my own baseline. And from that, I will start to consider where I really want to work, push myself and basically where I want to focus next year, or at least the first part of next year. So I don't really have too much to say about this piece. It is basically, I'm missing hiking, I'm missing being up in the mountains, and I'm imagining like someone doing that stretch at the top of a hike, at the end of a hike, and just really taking in the environment because it's something I just miss. It's been a really long time since I've been to the mountains, so eventually I'll get back there. But otherwise, there's really not too much to this. Um, yeah, if I think of anything, I'll toss it in later. But otherwise, I can't say I'm overly happy with this piece. But once again, I'm exploring, I'm testing myself, I'm trying to reestablish a baseline. So, okay, no buy. So last year, or rather in 2020, I decided to take on a no buy challenge. And like the end of 2020. So I officially started my no buy on November 12th, 2020. And I continued, I think, into essentially Black Friday. At that point, I figured I was so close to Black Friday, I might as well wait for the sales before I make any purchases for in 2021. So um, a couple things led into my no buy decision. A big one being that um, I was on a Discord server for Tori Gedvillas, uh, Gedvias, I'm not actually sure how to pronounce her name. She goes by that or previously Juicy Ink on YouTube. And I was a Patreon supporter of hers and part of her Discord community. And she was actively doing a no buy at the time. And due to <laughs> some of our hoarding tendencies on that channel, hoarding, stress purchasing, lots and lots of buying and enabling each other. Um, several of us decided to potentially try a no buy ourselves and I kind of kicked mine off a little early and that's why it was November and not January. And basically, I was interested in doing this anyway. I, I started to realize as I became more involved with an art community because I really didn't have that before, I was both influenced by and influencing other people's purchasing decisions, especially like even with YouTube, you're just watching people's unboxings and their favorite must have items. And you start to want those and buy those. There's so many subscription boxes that are unboxed on YouTube. And I definitely subscribe to art snacks myself at one point. And then you see what everyone else is getting. It's just this there's kind of a commercialized aspect of YouTube, whether intentional or not. Those videos tend to get a lot of views, they tend to get pushed to you, and then you want things more. I did at least. And then being part of this community um, on these Discord servers, you see what everybody else is buying and everyone gets excited. It's natural. There's new stuff. It's shiny. It's exciting. And then you want it too. And while I'm fortunate enough to be financially stable and able to afford buying the occasional art supply. Um, I know some other people in that same server weren't. And so when I, especially when I started influencing other people to purchase things and I knew, like I got bean paints and I showed it off, I was excited, here's some swatches, and then they wanted to buy it. And I know some people don't really have that same financial stability. I mean, people would talk about 
hurting for rent money and stuff. Then it really started to like make me realize how I was influencing other people in a way that's actually detrimental to them. And while it's not my responsibility to, you know, take care of everybody else, I'm allowed to have nice stuff. It still was upsetting to me. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized I also didn't need all of this stuff I was buying. I wasn't using it. So why was I even buying it? So it, it kind of became this thing that was bouncing around in my head for a while for various reasons. And I just decided it was time to go on my own no buy. So before I started my no buy, I actually did do a declutter because between my prior art snack subscriptions and other art supply hoarding gathering, I did have a fair collection. So I did declutter and donated a bunch of stuff. And then I did do another declutter. I meant to do it right after no buy. It didn't quite happen. Um, but I did one recently. I did share on and off supplies with friends if I knew they were looking for, say, watercolors and I had stuff I wasn't using or even just pouring a couple half pans because I have plenty of paint. I've been sharing with friends. So it helped. It's reduced the amount of stuff I wasn't using. But um, I'm bouncing all over the place. Then <laughs> for the no buy itself, my goal was to just basically buy no art supplies, journaling supplies, stationary supplies, because those were all things I was starting to accumulate too much of and too quickly. And I was giving myself the allowance that if I ran out of something that I couldn't replace with something else in my collection, for example, if I ran out of white gouache, that was a, that was fair. I could purchase new white gouache. But if it was something that could be replaced, like I ran out of a warm blue, but I have another warm blue, I would use that instead. So ultimately what happened was I actually had a really great experience with that no buy. I really felt like I formed a relationship with my art supplies that it was lacking before because as I used them more, I got to know them better. I got to know their properties, how they interacted. I also started studying color theory and color mixing and really understanding like what makes a harmonious palette and really fell in love with limited color palettes. And I found new favorite colors within my own collection that I really got to just take joy in using. I didn't need to go buy a new pretty color. I can use what I have and find that same kind of joy. And that was really exciting for me. So I really felt that not only did I reduce my spending, but I very much improved my art through these practices. And I got a lot out of that no buy. By the end of it, I realized I still made such a small dent in my art supply collection, um, which for those of you who don't know me, I primarily work in watercolors. I've mentioned gouache a few times. Gouache isn't my main thing. I am always working to try to use it more. But um, yeah, I mean, I still had so many paints. I barely made a dent in the collection that I decided to continue with the no buy into this year. So I did mention before that my no buy officially ended around Black Friday of 2021. And at that time, what I really wanted was fountain pens and inks, which I don't really use for art. I use more for journaling. I'm a big, I'm really into my planner. So I did purchase some of those items and then I put myself back on no buy for those items as well in the new year. During that time, since I didn't buy any like actual art supplies, I gave myself an allowance and technically my no buy for this year was a low buy. So what I allowed myself was one small palette and that is the A Gallo palette you see in this video. That was my purchase for this year. And I also allowed myself to purchase a new sketchbook for my friend Spoff who um, makes them with Bockingford tinted watercolor paper but only after I finished my current one, which I did. I have that sketchbook. I can't wait to use it, but I'm holding off just a little bit longer on that one. So I will start using that soon. I think just the white paper is really helping me evaluate my baseline a little better than using the different colored papers. So that's the rationale behind that for now. But yeah, um, so in that regard, I succeeded very much so. There's still some temptation, but honestly, after having gone through the no buy that like whenever I get stressed, I don't immediately start window shopping for art supplies. Um, I no longer just sit there and think about what I'm buying next. It's really definitely taken the edge off. There's definitely something I still want. And 
I do plan to make those purchases next year, but I'll get into that in just a moment. <laughs> I I have I'm getting ahead of myself and talking about my future plans a little early. But um I've completely forgot what I was talking about before. Yeah, I Oh yeah, so where did my no buy not succeed? Well, it wasn't perfect this year. Um but I'm not going to be too harsh about it because, you know, I've been much better than I used to be. So one thing was, I mentioned this before on my channel, my cat is sick and I wanted to do a nice portrait of her. And for whatever reason, I wanted, I felt that doing portrait on a wooden panel would be more appropriate than doing something on paper. I don't know why it just felt right to me. So I bought some wooden panels. Those are something I didn't own. And so arguably I broke no buy, but it felt right. And in this type of situation, I'm not going to criticize myself for that. And then partly in an attempt to get free shipping from Treckle and partly because I don't have a lot of square brushes and I've really fallen in love with using square brushes for opaque media. Um, I bought a couple brushes from Treckle at the same time. And just four, I, it's four brushes. It was a little brush set all square or rectangle. I forget what they're called. There's the flat wash and the square brush, I think. And they are just the perfect size for what I wanted to do. And they're actually absolutely delightful, delightful to work with. So I'm really happy I got them. Technically broke my no buy, but I think it was the right move, all things considered. So that portrait I'm still working on. I've taken an overly long hiatus. I'll get back to that over the Christmas break when I get some time off because I really want to be very engaged with that when I'm working on it, not just trying to fit it in around work and other things. And that I'm doing in casein. So yeah, a little different. But once again, I already own casein, so I didn't buy it for that per op for that purpose, I'm just trying to use the art supplies I haven't been using, and for some reason that felt like the right move to make for this particular piece. So yeah, I, I didn't do perfect this year, but that's okay. I think overall, I got what I wanted to out of these no-buy phases, experiments. I'm not sure the right word. My goal was never to overly restrict myself. I wanted to basically continue to build that relationship with my art supplies. It's hard to really get to know something without putting in that time. There's that mileage, that brush mileage and paint mileage, paper mileage. Every time you add a new variable into a process, it's going to change things. And by spending so much time focused on just these same tools, I've gotten to know them so much better. And that's allowed me to experiment in different ways. I'm not using new paints. I'm not using new brushes. I'm not using new paper. Instead, I'm trying new techniques. I'm trying different ways of combining paint and applying them. And that's helping build my experience, my abilities, and improve upon my art in general. So I think that's been really important for me because I'm not sure I would have gotten there in the same way had I kept allowing myself to buy something anytime I saw a new shiny thing that I had to have. So I'm very happy that I did go on the no buy and I think I've built up enough self-control now, hopefully, that if I do officially take myself off the no buy, I won't fall into those same habits. It's and not that I have to restrict myself. Like I said, I'm not I'm not hurting for money. It, buying a couple pans of paint isn't going to kill me. But if I don't need them and I don't have like I don't have a plan to use them, then it's just going to sit there or excuse me, or just I don't know, not get used and someone else could use it. And while in a lot of paint is mass produced and that's not an issue. I do feel bad because paint and paper do in time expire. Now panned watercolor tends to be a little better about this because I see people get old vintage paint palettes from thrift stores and they work or work well enough. But I know, and I've had firsthand experience now with both gouache and watercolor paper expiring. And when you pick up something you think is going to work and it doesn't, it can ruin the process. It could ruin a painting if you're already working on it. Um, if you're not familiar with it, 
watercolor paper or paper in general is sized and what sizing does is essentially if, if you put a paintbrush on a paper towel it's going to absorb and spread that's how that works um, and you see that in the same manner like if you put it on a regular piece of printer paper it's going to get really crinkly and it's not going to be nicely controlled the sizing allows you to control that paint as you put it down it's a gelatin or a vegan gelatin mixture that basically repels the paint just enough to give you that time to manipulate it to let it sit in the place you put it in in general assuming you haven't already wet the whole page and the paint just takes off but it's a, what allows watercolor paper to do its thing and when it expires what basically happens is when you put down a big wash of paint it gets blotchy it absorbs unevenly um, and it varies sometimes it stains sometimes it looks fine at first but then starts to wear down because you have a very thin layer left and in my case when I've seen it happen it wasn't the first layer I didn't just put down a wash and go oh this paper is bad let me copy my sketch onto a different piece and start again it was after a couple layers and then you've already pretty much committed to the piece you're working on so it's it's very frustrating and um i haven't explained that perfectly so if you're more if you're interested in sizing or paper properties i recommend looking it up because that was not a very scientific explanation but it's i think it's really interesting um and for the record, that happened with the Windsor Newton cotton paper, and there's nothing wrong with the paper. It's great paper. It just was exposed to my human environment for too long, and that happens. Um, if you do have paper you're not using, your best bet is to keep it in an airtight container, and that will help prevent, especially if you live in a highly human environment, it'll help. Same thing with paints. You could keep tubes of paint in an airtight container. I hear a lot of people do that with gouache because it helps prevent it from drying out because paint can dry out in the tube. In my case, what happened was my white gouache actually went bad. Like I poured, I shook it because I knew I hadn't used it recently. So I shook it up real well, kind of squeezed it around to try to mix up because I knew the binder probably separated. And when I poured it out, it was still really liquidy, but it was also like yellow tinted, which could be at first thought binder separating or it could be spoiling so i took a stick put it in the tube mixed it up and it didn't really re-solidify and it was still yellow and i started to notice a bit of a fragrance so yeah that tube of gouache actually went bad on me which was completely unexpected i had to toss it luckily it wasn't a brand new tube i'd used it for quite a bit so it wasn't the biggest loss it was just unexpected and that was one of my purchases this year was more white gouache to make up for that because can't have that and can't work with that so luckily that one I figured out early enough in the process where I didn't ruin a painting I did have to start over because I tried anyway because I'm foolish but it was early enough where it wasn't a huge loss so yeah um just with that in mind I'm just I, I really don't want to have a huge collection of paints I'm not using and I have that already so going forward I'm coming off of the no buy but those are the things I'm going to try to keep in mind when I am tempted because if I'm not going to be using it or I'm not willing to turn around and donate it if it, it doesn't work for me then it's just more stuff that's potentially going to go bad before someone gets a chance to use it and that's not cool so um things i am looking forward to in the near future is adding a couple more half pants to this palette um i'm using the black or the really dark gray is actually from the mariah beth fun mariah beth and fine liner nerd palette it was just a little six paint palette i still use it but in this case it was the easiest one to move over here because it has a magnet on the bottom already um but i want to add a couple dark colors just convenience colors to this palette and then i think i will be perfectly happy set so maybe two or three more paints um and then i do want to fill up the roman schmall palette i have um like i said or maybe I didn't, my friend Spoff sent me a couple Roman Schmal paints, I think four full pans, and I'd like to fill that palette up. I put it in a, it'll hold 12, so I'm requesting Jackson's Art Supply gift card for Christmas, and I'll put that towards getting a couple more paints. I know I need to get that quinacridone gold, though, before 
PO48 goes away. I'm so bummed about that. I've really fallen in love even more so with quinacridone gold from using this palette. And now I can't bear to think of it being gone again because we've already lost PO49, which I never got to try. Uh, if you're not aware, um, PO48, the pigment supply, was discontinued quite some time ago, I think, but it's actually, some brands are starting to run low on those supplies now, so paints that contain PO48 might eventually start being phased out, depending on how much was stockpiled by each individual brand, and Roman Schmall recently announced that they are running out soon, so they're putting out their final batches. I don't know how much they have exactly, but it's sad. Don't buy the last one without me. So yeah, that's really, I think everything I had to say, I hope because this is almost done and I've talked long enough and I want to go to bed. But if you are interested in taking on a no buy challenge, I absolutely recommend it. I think it was just a really good experience for me. But if you don't want to do it, if it's not something that interests you, there's no reason to feel forced into it unless, I don't know, maybe your, your wallet can't keep up with your spending. It's definitely a personal choice, but it really has helped me, and I'm glad I, I'm very glad I did it for these past two years. So, yeah, your mileage may vary. But with that all being said, that's the end of this piece and the end of this. Well, I guess I still have the paint peel, so a couple more moments there. But um, yeah, like I said, I think I said, in my next video, I'll probably be talking about this little baseline process and my goals for 2022 or 2023. I know what year it is. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I hope you're all having a great day. Happy holiday season. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe out there. Stay sane. And I will talk to you maybe in a future video. Take care. Bye.